2020. Big. The general manager of the New York Giants, Dave Gettleman, joins us on the Michael K. Show. Dave, it's Michael, Don, and Peter. How are you today? I'm doing fine. Happy New Year, guys. Happy New Year to you. Uh, I'm sure that the last couple of days have not been that easy for you. So we'll start with the, the firing uh, of, of the head coach, Pat Shermer. Was that your call, Dave, or did it come from above you? That was, that's, that was not my call. So you would have kept him? That w it came from above. Do you think that Shermer did a good job? I'm not going to go there. It's not, it's not fair for me to, to, to opine on Pat's performance right now. So when you say from above, people think John Mara. How much does Steve Tisch have a say now when you say above? Well, they, they, they're co-owners, mm -hmm. and, and they discuss everything. Now, Dave, the search for a new coach, will it be you as the point man, or is it going to be those, the two owners? It'll be Steve and John, and I will be involved as well as Kevin Abrams. Now, were you the point man for the hiring of Shermer? We're, it was the same setup. Same setup. Do you, were you surprised then, Dave, that you kept your job and he didn't? You know, as I said in my presser on Saturday, on uh, Tuesday, um, we had substan I had substantive uh, conversations with Steve and John over uh, the last couple weeks of the season. And, uh, you know, they, they made their decisions. At any point, did you think your job was in jeopardy, Dave? Yes, of course. We didn't, you know, he didn't win enough. <laughs> you know, mm. this, is, this, is, this is professional sports. It seems, though, you've been, in, you've been in the sports business most of your adult life. It seems that the time that people are given to build or change is much shorter than in the past. I don't know if that's social media. I don't know if it's just the way the world is right now where everything has to be yesterday. But two years is not a real long time to really turn something around that was in pretty bad shape. It, it, I'm not going to argue with you. <laughs> now, it's, you know, it's... it's Two years is a short period of time, yes. And it's really, to me, Dave, almost one year, right? Because when you came in, I, I thought the mission statement was different. Because the feeling was, at least from outside, that you were going for it. You drafted Saquon Barkley, which immediately was going to help the team. You had Eli Manning, and the feeling was that Eli still had time left. A lot of money invested on the defensive side of the ball. That going into 2018, you thought you were a playoff team, and then going into 2019, you were in a rebuild. So do you feel that that put you in a tough spot? Because the mission statement seemed to change midway through that 2018 season when it was clear you weren't a playoff team. Okay, well... This is where I'm culpable, okay? I, I came into it, and I, I thought that we could do both at the same time. And I was wrong. Was that because of your belief that, that Eli still had a lot left? Or was it something else? That was part of it, mm -hmm. yes. Did Eli have less than you thought he had? Um, we, we had to build a better team around him. Okay. Specifically an offensive line? Mm-hmm. Now, was that your full blame, or did the organization, the guys from above, also feel that you could do both at once, or did they feel, get me another championship for Eli? It, it, it was, um, listen, you know, we obviously haven't done enough, okay? We obviously haven't done enough. And I made a miscalculation. I'm being very upfront about it. And I thought that we could do both at the same time, and it didn't work out that way. Now, I'm wondering, Dave, I, I, I know you can't speak for them. You're interviewing for that job. I always got the impression that they did not want a full rebuild. Did you go in there knowing they didn't want a, re a full rebuild and told them that I could do both and then put maybe too much pressure on yourself to do it? Uh, you know, it's, it, 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 that's a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> Um, ask me that question again. How's that? All right. I will ask you this way. Did you fashion the way you answered their questions knowing that they didn't want a full rebuild? Did no. you truly believe no. No. That, this, that, that this had to be rebuilt? I thought we could do it. I thought we could do both at the same time. Uh, you know, I said it twice. I thought we could do both mm. at the same time, and I was wrong. But now, how many teams have done both? The only thing I can remember is maybe the Yankees, and that's a different sport where they kind of they reset, but they didn't break it down all the way. But how many football teams have done both at the same time? It's tough to do. It's not easy. 
Now, you mentioned that uh, Tish and Mara are 50% owners, but w Steve had mentioned that he wants to be more involved. So did you get a sense he's more involved now than he was when you were first hired? Uh, I, you know, I, I guess, I, I, you know, I think to me it's the same. You took a chance drafting Daniel Jones with the sixth pick. Do you feel good about that right now? Yes. You think he's going to be the star that you think he, he was going to be when you drafted him? Yes. Do you feel stronger about that than you did the day you drafted him? Yes. <laughs> what about why? Well, really and truly, the, the, for him to handle everything the way he did, you know, we in, in his first game, he can, brings us to a come-from-behind win. He's won a game in overtime. He's done things that no other um, uh, rookie quarterback has done uh, behind a, an offensive line that was inconsistent and a running game that was inconsistent. He is, a, he, is, he is terrific for this market. He is mentally and physically tough. And, um, you know, you, you don't know. You, you know, you can talk to people all day long. You can watch them play football. But, you know, until they're in your building, you don't know about the mental, re, mental resiliency and toughness. And, you know, he was, uh, he, he's got it. And, and you mentioned it, Dave, but he threw for five touchdowns and no picks multiple times. It was incredible. The one thing he clearly seemed to struggle with as the year went on was fumbling the football. How much of that is a how much of that is a priority, and how big a concern is it for you guys moving forward? Well, you know, when you, obviously when you're turning the ball over, it's it's an issue, okay. And one of the things I think that all young quarterbacks struggle with is. First, their first time in the pocket under that kind of pressure with those with, with with people that big moving that quickly. Okay, so they their ball security has to get better. There were times late in the year where Daniel was much better. You know, he could feel the pressure. He put two hand, moved, put two hands on the ball, moved it around from in, from the swiping. So he got better that way. The other issue is how many times have you seen the the, the smart veteran quarterbacks get pressured, get rushed, and what do they do? They throw it in the dirt at somebody's feet. Let's live to play another down. You know, let's finish our series with the ball in our hands, not in somebody else's. So he'll get there. He'll get there. Dave, you, you guys obviously got off to a terrible start, the nine losses in a row. And I'm wondering, as a general manager who has to think about drafting and stuff like that, no team wants to lose. But no. when you guys won those two games at the end, one with Eli, did you kind of cringe there? It might have cost you Chase Young. Did, did you sit there and go, mm, I like to win, but it would have been better to have a higher draft pick? Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. It, what, what people don't want to understand, which I shouldn't say what they don't want to, what you have to understand, and please, I'm not being, trying, uh, I'm not being condescending, that everything, that, you know, you, well, we're trying to build that culture piece downstairs, okay, and, and really in the building, and when you when when you are happy about losing, what message are you sending? No, we want our guys fighting hard for you know every Sunday, on Monday, on Thursday, and uh, you want the, the the goal is to win. So no. All right. So you're looking for a new coach. How important is bringing in a coach that can mature and make your quarterback better? Well, that that's part of the that's certainly part of the equation. That's certainly part of the equation. It's, it's you know, we, um, you know, we're, as, as we identify coaches and go through the process, you know, that's something we discuss in the during the interview session. Dating all the way back to Bill Parcells who said, you know, if I'm going to cook the food, I want to shop for the groceries. What if there's a coach out there that impresses Mara and Tish and he wants to have decision over personnel? Would you give up some of your power? Listen, this is a, this is a collaboration, okay? And it's all about, excuse me, whatever needs to be done in the best interest of the New York football giants, I will do. But you're the more experienced of the people making the decision because you've been there and done that. Well, again, it's a collaboration. In, in terms of Daniel Jones having to grow, does that eliminate, Dave, a defensive-minded coach, or does that no. not matter? No, we need we need the best coach for the New York Football Giants, and that could so Daniel's maturation can also be done with a defensive minded coach. Would it be bring in the right offensive guy, sure. Your thoughts on the the Redskins hiring Ron Rivera? You had obviously a, a history with him in Carolina. You guys went to a Super Bowl together. Your thoughts on him? Oh, Ron's a, Ron's a terrific coach. 
He is a terrific football coach. Great defensive mind. He's a leader of men. Um, they will. Um, uh, he will. You know. He, he's 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 a formidable coach. Did you guys ever have an opportunity to even try to talk with him, or was the Washington deal too far down the line? Uh, I, I really don't know that. I just you know know that before we could turn around, the deal was done. All right, let's talk about this team is presently constituted. Uh, the defense obviously had its problems. You had a lot of draft picks, a lot of young kids on that defensive side of the ball. Were you happy with their progression during the course of the season? Well, you know, it's, it's, I, I think that, you know, they all made progress, but I, I, I think that um, we lose sight of how young they truly are. You know, when I first got in the industry, we're drafting 23-, 24-year-old men who played you know, major college football four or five years. Now we're drafting 21-year-old kids who've been in college for three years. And what they don't understand is they're about to line up against 28, 29-year-old men who are um, going to try to rip their lungs out. It's, 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 a, it's become a bigger jump. It's become a bigger jump. And the college game is not our game. It's a different game. So there's a lot, there's a lot to learn and a short time to get there. Dave, you, you said during your press conference you still think the game, most of the game is about stopping the run and having a running game. But when you look around the NFL, there's so much offense with throwing. And, you know, you see Drew Brees and Pat Mahomes and things like that. Right. Is it the same deal, uh, the game that you well, grew up in? You, 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 you say, you, well, obviously we're throw, they're throwing the ball way more. Than, yeah. Even way more today than they were before. Mm -hmm. You know, it's why people will talk about... You know, people will say, well, your third corner is, your, you, know, is your, you know, your nickel. You know, at the end of the day, he's playing 65% of the snaps. You know, you're, you're in nickel 65, 70% of the time. You know, your, your, your run-pass ratio is 65, 35. You know, I should, you know, pass being the 65. You know, it's, it's, it's definitely a different NFL. But, if you, you know, take a look at the teams that are in the playoffs. Take a look at those teams. Kansas City runs the ball very well. The Saints run the ball very well. You know, it's it's just it's just the way it is. What happened last year in the Super Bowl when New England was on the four, six yard line? They ran True. the ball. Mm -hmm. You know, you 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 can't. Like I said, the style of play evolves. It does, and that's what's happened. People are in 11 personnel, and they're going empty, you know, way more than they ever have in the past. And we're drafting, you know, uh, you know, six four, 235 pound tight ends that run four four, and sending them down the field. You know, so yeah, the style of play ev has evolved. There's no doubt about it. But I just, you know, if you look, if you really look at the playoff teams, and you look at what's going on, if if you don't have a running game. It's very, very difficult. To Would you say that the running games that are successful in the league come from the ability to block, the, that the system maybe produces those running backs more than the running backs' talent themselves? Ask me that again. That the running, the successful running backs in this league, is it really right. more system than it is just their individual talents to run the football? That they throw so well that they're able to, you know, keep eight men out of the box on the defensive side and they're just able to open things up for the running back more than just the singular talent running back producing those yards? Yeah, you can make that argument. You can make that argument. You know, and that may be why, um, you know, you can make that argument, but... So let's go right. to the quarterback, the, the running back that you drafted second overall a couple of years ago, Saquon Barkley. Right. Not a great second year, but he did have the high ankle sprain. How much of his lack of production at times in the second half had to do with that injury? Uh, you know, it's, it, it, I, I really can't speculate on that um, in, in terms of, I mean, you know, you can, you can make the argument. You know, it, it, listen, when you've got, when you've got a, a thoroughbred like he is, sometimes you, you, you you know they they got to they got to trust that they're healthy, plain and simple. And uh, you know I just uh, he just took him a little bit longer and he came, but he finished really strong. So we're excited about that. Dave, how important is it to get a head coach that is really prepared to handle this market media-wise? Uh, in, in, in my assessment, there were moments in which Pat struggled with it, sort of the tone to get. And you don't appear to be a guy who loves talking that often. And this is a fan base that's pretty angry and frustrated at this point. Is the way a coach communicates with this community important moving forward? 
Absolutely. And, and, and very frankly, we, we've discussed it internally. And, uh, you know, I'm, I, I probably I need to do more. I need to do more. I know that. Um, I, I, you know, it was it was like in Carolina, you know, I was available uh, you know, during the regular off season. And then once the season started, I just truly felt that it's about the players and coaches. And so in my time there, I think the, the whole time I was there, I only spoke to the media once in season. And that was in 15 when, you know, making that Super Bowl run. And, you know, Ron was getting bombarded with, um, you know, the press. So I, I took, uh, I, I took a, I did a presser, you know, on the field. But, you know, it, it is important. Uh, you know, I've got to improve my messaging. And, uh, you know, we'll, we're going to maybe adjust the way we're doing it. Unfortunately, we don't get a chance to talk with you that much. So I'm just going to say this out front. It seems like you, you, you seem like, it seems very distasteful for you to have to answer these questions because you obviously know more than we do and more than the fans, and you come off that way. Do you find that problematic? Do your bosses find that problematic, that the message that you're sending, you do sometimes come, come off as condescending to the people that ask the questions and obviously the fans in, in, in turn? Well, if I come off conde uh, condescending, I apologize. Well, I mean, but has that ever been brought up to you other than me just bringing it up to you? Uh, very frankly, no. Really? Wow. I think the comment that I remember, Dave, was when you said, trust us. Well, we're not just going to trust you on your word. we got to see it right. play out. Right, exactly. Oh, absolutely. So... Well, and then also Pat yeah. made it a little bit worse, too. We talked about this a lot, that after the jo after Jones played well in the preseason game, it sort of seemed like Pat was kind of being like, ha-ha, told you so. And, I, I, you know, listen, I, I know we're media, we're sensitive, et cetera, but that is sort of the, the feeling that we got from the Giants this, this past season. Well, it's, it's interesting. My wife told me, you, can, you know, you can't argue with feelings. And, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm not being a wise guy here, just making a point. And, and I understand. I, I really do. Now, you can't answer all of this because you haven't been here for the entire time. But, but I feel like I want to be honest. Like, I, I really look at the problem this organization has had over the last couple of years, Dave, is that they were trying to get a little bit more out of Eli before he was done. That was John Mara's dad's last draft pick. Wellington Mara's last pick was Eli. And this team won Super Bowls at 10-6 and six and 9-7. and seven. So there was this feeling of just get in it and we can win another one for Eli. And I really think it stunted the growth of this organization. Did you get any sense when you came in here? That there was some sort of mandate, like win another one for Eli. Let's squeeze one more out there. Kind of a delusion in believing that you guys were closer than you actually were because you had a former Super Bowl champion running your league and maybe not looking at the fact that he was an aging quarterback that wasn't what he once was. The cliff note answer is no. No. There was did, never that pressure. Did you ever think, Dave, that, that Shermer would want to replace Eli after game two, and did that give you pause when he did? It was, it, it, no, it did not give me pause. Did you, when you started the season, though, do, I know that you said in your press conference that, you know, obviously Jones came along a lot quicker than you thought, but did you, did. Did you ever think it was going to be two games? No. Very frankly, no. So in retrospect, was that the right decision or the wrong decision? Was what the right decision? Going to Daniel in game three. Going to Daniel was the correct decision. No, if you had known at the beginning of the season, we're going to go to Daniel, and you can't know that, but it, looking back. You can't know that. You're talking hypothetical now. You can't do that. You know, I don't mean to be argumentative, but really, you're saying it yourself as you're asking me. <laughs> I know, but I mean, that's a lot of money to spend on a backup quarterback, and I understand all the things that he brings to the party. He's a great guy. He's a great representative of the organization, but you don't pay a backup quarterback $26 million. He's also a great mentor. He's teaching the, he's, he's teaching the kid every day. And you, can't, and, and you cannot put a price tag on that. But getting back, you said there was no mandate about Eli, but when you looked at... And you thought you could do both. You thought that you could right. win and rebuild. Wasn't right. that part of the misjudgment, the misjudgment of Eli? Correct. Um, Leonard Williams. Mm -hmm. For a look-see, did you right. give up too many draft picks? No, I don't, I don't feel that way at all. You know, we, we, we really have a young defensive line. This was a chance to acquire a, 
26, a healthy 26-year-old defensive lineman with a lot of versatility and a solid NFL production. And, you know, we felt he'd be better. Taking him would be, uh, we, you know, the value was there for the third and the fifth round pick. Did you think that the Jets or somebody else was going to sign him before he became a free agent? And doesn't he have all the leverage now, Dave, in negotiating with you? I don't think so. He, he's been in my office. He told me he wants to be here. So we'll just work on it. You made some trades last year, um, mm -hmm. and then obviously you, you, you dealt Odell. Um, the feeling might have been that the culture had to change around some of the players that you let go, and yet you still finished 4-12. and 12. So do you have any regrets making the deals, the trades that you made at the time, letting Snacks go, letting Odell go? Are you still comfortable with those moves? Yes. Why? Because I'm still comfortable with those moves. <laughs> <laughs> Well, was, I just, I, the reason I asked why played, is because the team didn't played. improve at all. Matter of fact, the law it, it, it was worse. But it, did you did you you felt you were in rebuild at that particular point? So the record yeah. doesn't matter. No, the record always matters. But we felt we needed to rebuild. Well, Dave, we know that you have to go right now. You have a lot of interviews to conduct and things like that with prospective coaches. More important than us, we thank you for your time and we wish you a happy new year. Happy new year to you guys as well. All right, thank you very much. Okay, bye.